How's it going? This is Eric Pan from City Studio. Thank you so much for your time for the webinar today. It's the first time we launch all our products for this whole year because we wish to create an interface to share what we are working at and also to initiate the conversation with you to understand your demands and expectations. Before we talk about so many exciting products and trends, let me show you a short video of our efforts in 2021. So from 2008, we have been providing open source hardware modules to makers all over the world. There have been so many exciting possibilities we have been witnessed. But we are also exploring in the past few years about the next phase of the maker movement. Besides all the proof of concepts, besides all the interesting things, how can we bring more productivity into the field? It's much more difficult than just a proof of concepts. It requires a lot of engineering, a lot of field work, a lot of uh, pains and gains. But I think it's really interesting to find out what is the frontier for IoT. So we have been keeping hearing the demands about sustainability, environmental protection, wildlife, smart agricultures, carbon offsets. But we see too few IoT devices ready for that. So that is the frontier. That's the most challenging situation for electronics and wireless communication. And SEED is up to the challenge. The digital transformation starts with the civilized world. It has everything for IoT, the power, the shelter, telecommunication coverage, the people around them. But the wild is more on the opposite. It's off the grid, it's reckless, it's too far away which is making it a perfect frontier for IoT as well. We care about the air because of the temperature, humidity, the microclimates, the nightness for the beings around us, the CO2E for carbon offsets. We care about the soil, the moisture, temperature, conductivity, with which we could use less resource for better plant yields, preventing the wildfire and converting the deserts. We care about so many objects out there, the wildlife, our cantos, the infrastructure like bridge, wind and solar power stations. We need to prepare the coverage so all this important information could be transmitted back in real time. We need to have process power close to the scenes. We need edge computing. We need to work with the community to build more futuristic solutions by updating our legacy devices 
or insert the latest technology into the scenes. The first frontier is about the coverage. If you look at the planetary surface, about 3.5 are built up areas, which mean in the cities, the towns, the villages, they are likely to have telecommunication coverage. But the rest, if we include the oceans, the 99% of the planetary surface is out of coverage. So for any IoT project in the wild, it will be the first constraint to be resolved. Gladly, we see LoRaWAN has been playing a critical role. Public network like Helium, TTN, they are expanding very quickly. And people can always set up their own coverage on demand. So to expand the coverage, we need to get them ready for multiple scenarios. Should, it should be covered from indoor to outdoors, from urban area to rural areas, from industrial to emerging scenarios. So this has to be like wide coverage up to 10 kilometers. It's becoming a very good supplement to existing. So we hope even non-tech people could build up a coverage in simple steps and manage the network in a way they are used to. And the, hope the no data can instantly be av available in API and they can be accessible integrating to existing systems. And we have been shipping over 100,000 NoRaWAN gateways. And uh, we understand the requirement of doing it with security and stability. And we have made the network compatible with the most popular IoT cloud services, including Hanon, TTN, Azure, AWS, and Google Clouds. And we have been delivering top quality volume and by our elite engineering and supply chain teams. We do it with proud. So it's time for us to unleash the next generation of our gateway. So to wrap up, we have a built-in 3DBI high-performance antenna to make good enough for you to cover up to 10 kilometers. And uh, we have built-in the securities from silicons all the way to the cloud. And we have hope to make you easily set up. So we have uh, upgraded with uh, Bluetooth configurations with app. And you can just use PoE, like a uh, power through Ethernet, to support the whole system. And we leave the extensibility for 3G and 4G and the GPS options. And uh, we are going to have outdoor version with accessories. And uh, if you have multiple devices, we have the fleet management uh, options. You can have the device pass. You can see the dashboard right away. And also we have local consoles to help you to debug. And we are continuously providing worldwide support, 24 plus seven and uh, we will get the compliance ready and our local distributors will support you as well 
So the SensorCap Hotspot app is already available for free. You can now easily add any SensorCap Hotspot onto it. You can see a dashboard right from the app and you can update the location antenna and also to run diagnosis. And the whole device will be uh, published in April. The price will give you some exciting uh, shock. So the SenseCap outdoor enclosures, we are preparing them. It's IP66 from minus 30 to 85 Celsius degree. So you can feel free to deploy them outdoors. And we also work with Africa Explorer to provide different grade of antenna all the way from DBI to ADBI. And all the accessories will be ready for you to uh, install your outdoors. So beyond the coverage, the next frontier we're looking at are the sensors. So how can we build the sensors ready for the wild? And it's easy enough for you to just deploy them in three steps. And the whole thing should be scalable and keep evolving with the next te technology. So we have a quick video. So many years we have been challenging on how to build a device for the wild. So the latest generation of SenseCap is IP66. And uh, with 19 amp hour battery, now it can be survived from minus 40 to 85 Celsius degree for more than 10 years. And uh, with the building antenna, we can transmit the signal back up to 10 kilometers line of sight. This is totally solid for the wild and test it. And uh, you can just use three steps to get the data. First, you install them onto the uh, field where you need just power them on. Second, second step, you pull out your phones with Bluetooth, scan to a uh, QR code. Now you can configure the device for the provisionings. And on the third step, you will get the data from the SenseCap cloud to see a dashboard to see how it's going and uh, keep feeding the data back. We have the API ready for the most popular public cloud, Azure, AWS, and even for your private servers on the edge. And uh, we keep in mind that whole thing should be scalable. So we control the cost as low as $49. And we expect people might be using like a single elements for multiple locations. So we need to have uh, a way for people to manage the fleets. Imagine you have 100, 100 sensors, you don't want to change them one by one and you need to make sure they are working fine. So we'll provide the, the cloud tool for that. The basic sensors we are presenting today is called S210X series. They are the most of the basic elements you might need for the air and for the soil. S211 is air temperature and humidity sensors you can have too many things in need of that. And the uh, S2102 is about like the intensity. Like uh, for your plants or for your solar panels, you want to understand how many light is coming. And even for the beaches, you don't want to get too much tanned. You need that kind of sensors. And the uh, S2103 is combination editing CO2. So you can monitor multiple places on the CO2 emissions. That's pretty uh, necessary if you have uh, like chicken farm. Uh, down to the soil, S2104 and S2105. 
we can take the basic temperatures, moistures, and conductivity data out from your soil. So you can water or use fertilizers according to the situation. So we use lower resources to maximize the yield for that. The price is from $49 to $100 each. I know this is not enough. Beyond the basic sensors, we're providing the data logger. So you can very quickly to turn your existing industrial sensors into a LoRaWAN sensor node by just uh, attaching its wires onto the sense cap and it's still waterproof. We have provided the analog I2C UART IS 485 and uh, we are preparing more protocols so you can cover more than 100 ish the current popular industrial sensors. This will be ready in the second quarter of this year with a price of $49. Well, that, since we, we are serving the maker community, they know how to use microcontrollers. They know how to bridge open source hardware into the applications for many years. So we are building the S2100 RAWAN controller. It's, it has built in RP2040 from Raspberry Pi. You can use all kinds of popular programming language to change the logic. And you can choose from our existing more than 500 groove modules as a combination. So put them into the box to apply your logic. It becoming a new sensor or new controller for your existing appliances. It, the creation is endless. And I know you're good at that. Okay, here comes the most exciting part, machine learning. So we have been shipping a lot of dev kits for AI for the last few years, and we see a lot of inspirational projects from the community. And also the progress of machine learning on the microcontrollers has been taking very great progress. So as we can see, people are making specialized chipsets. They have a lot of standardized TensorFlow Light Micro models you can download or share. And even on a microcontroller, you can do the video inferencing up to 30 frames per second. And the power, can, power consumption can be as low as one milliwatt. And the setup is quite simple. You just put the sensors along with microcontrollers. You get the data from real world, then you class the data with the tanks, then you can start to do train and start doing the inferencing. It's much easier than before that the last mile can be accomplished by yourself. So what's it to do with LoRaWAN? Well, how can we embed that with AI into the sensors out in the wild? If we do a very simple calculation, LoRaWAN is already the low power transmission protocol. And uh, through our measurement for one packet, it's 19.5 milliwatt. But what if you want to transmit the image back to the cloud? It might take a few minutes, and it's very time and energy consuming. You can not likely to do real-time inferencing. But with machine learning on the device itself, you can keep porting, keep like uh, the input of the camera, like real-time 30 frames per second or one frame per second, and process on the microcontroller just send the events back, like what is the result, what kind of animals you have found, what's the probability of uh, the inferencing. Then you only just need to send maybe 32 bytes of data back to your cloud sooner or when. The same thing applies to sound. With a microphone, the sound you are detecting, if you, it's uh, always on, is consuming only six, uh, 0 0.6 milliwatt per second. So, with this combined together, you can have a machine learning equipped ultra low power sensor. And you can have endless possibilities to your applications. And you can use a, a, a mobile phone with Bluetooth to do the OTA to change different models. And you can train the models by yourself as well. So we feel this is unleashing a lot of possibilities up in the horizontal. So we keep hearing people like using AI to do interesting projects. Like to use the sound to tell if there's a rare species of bird 
or to understand the diversity of the ecosystem. And we see people want to monitor the machineries for preventive maintenance, but out into, into the wild, like the generators, the machineries, where there's no connectivity. They don't want to build a shield of threat. And there is uh, at least two or three group of people coming to us. They want to tell if the wild elephants are close to the villages, because a lot of damages has been happened. Either the human being's life has been damaged, or the wildlife it has been threatened because it's a conflict between human beings and the, the animals. So they want to have a sensor which can understand if there is a proximity of the elephants so they can alarm the villagers to escape for, to, to hide from the elephants until they left. Also we care about the animals, the pig farms, the chicken farms, what are the noises are like? Whenever they scream, there are kind of information inside, but we need to use AI instead so the human beings keep listening in their uh, surroundings. So we are very excited to present you the A1102 NeuralWand sensor for sound and vibration AI. So it's going to be a very high signal to noise ratio with omnidirectional sensitivities. And it's no power. With 19 amp hour battery, it can ensure for three years battery life and industrial support from uh, minus 40 to 85 Celsius degree as well. And uh, the bandwidth is magnificent. It's up to 80K Hertz, which means even for bats, for a lot of ultrasound you cannot hear, you can use machine learning to tell the results. The release date of the whole thing is going to be ready in June and we are targeting to price it as $59. Besides the sound, we always want to check out by looking at things remotely. For example, we want to know the insects on the field, what kind of type, of, what kind of numbers are there, so we can use the pesticide more efficiently. We need to care about the wildlife, so we now we need to understand the appearances, the behaviors. We want to know if the fruits are ready to harvest or too late. We want to know the outdoors, what's happening out there to, for the security or for like, uh, other missions. So we need to extend our visions for thousands of kilometers away. So surprisingly, we have the solution from HiMax has built in 400 megahertz DSP, tailored for machine learning on the edge. And it has super low power down to 2.2 milliwatt for one frame per second. And we have multiple machine learning algorithms ready for all kinds of applications. And because it's inference on the edge, we have less worries about uh, privacy or security issues. Of course, we can as well to use Bluetooth to change the models or to configure that for different scenario. This will be ready in July. The price tag is $69. So besides the single dot sensors, we have more advanced like uh, sensor stations. If we look at a few decades ago, the radio station is very bulky. You have like 10 or 20 square meter of space, maybe on top of hills. There's a lot of uh, uh, scientific-like experiments going on. You need to have some experts to manually record and uh, uh, send the data back. But uh, after many years of evolution, we are integrating everything into a single device. And it can be deployed on the, the entry pole, on top of your buildings, where even they into the fields. So we have done a lot of efforts to put together the wear station for all kinds of setup. The most complex version, we have the optimal optical rain gauge to, through the rain drops, you can understand how many rains are in this area. The lightness sensors, you know how many lightness throughout the day. And uh, the most uh, difficult one is uh, the ultrasound of wind speed and uh, direction. It's up to 65 meters per second. We calibrate 
these sensors. So it's long-term maintenance-free and real-time data to understand the wind uh, situation. And we have a room, we have a house for all kinds of sensors like humidity, temperature, air pressure, particle sensors, and all kinds of specialized ga gas sensors. All this whole thing has been wrapped up in UV protection plastic. So they can be working in the wild for a very long time. And uh, all the designs are P66. And uh, they are available in different forms already. We will upgrade them with LoRaWAN connectivity very soon. So this is now the new thing we are going to announce. We are caring about carbon offsets. So beyond the basic weather stations, we are looking into carbon offsets. If we cannot measure it, we cannot improve it. So what if we can have mo much more finer monitoring grid to understand even into human areas, like to get more finer data of carbon emission and offsets. So there are several things from agriculture, from the cities, for power plants. There are so many places we need to care about the carbon emission change. But we are not experts on... Professor Zhen is a reputed expert in climate change and a pioneer from his domain adopting IoT micro stations to monitor carbon emission in a grid level. He came to us and uh, asking our help to build an IoT sensor that can do the CO2 monitoring. Without any doubt, we involved. So for the last of a few years, we worked together to build one of its kind carbon emission sensor. So we invite uh, Professor Zhen to share his uh, story and his efforts. Um, hi, I'm Professor Lin Zhen. To reach carbon neutrality, we need to monitor CO2 emissions. If you can't monitor it, you can't manage it. IPCC has recommended the top-down approach, where we use carbon satellites, ground observations, air plan. For ground observation, the common method is to use these high-accuracy analyzers, but they're expensive. The one behind me costs 100,000 US dollars. Working with C Studio, we have developed the SenseCap S1000, a miniaturized low-cost CO2 sensor with an accuracy less than 5 ppm. By far, 200 such sensors have been deployed in Beijing, a dozen also deployed in Baltimore, Washington area. These sensors can also be used on vehicles, balloons, as well as drones. So this is called a SenseCap S1000. It's one of its kind. It's the smallest 10-in-1 compact CO2 monitoring station. There's no moving parts. It's maintenance-free. And each of the devices is individually calibrated in the wind tunnels to guarantee its consistency. And we had a lot of innovations done into this small device to make sure we can achieve 5 ppm precision in CO2 measurement. And the price is 2% of existing solutions. We are sending it for $2,000. $199, releasing the second quarter of this year. So there are so many sensors we announced today. Let's wrap up a little bit. First, we need to care about the air. From a very simple humidity temperature sensors, but uh, can survive in the wild for long, up to complex, more vanguard sensors like CO2 emission station. And uh, we care about objects, wildlife, animals, infrastructures. So we integrate AI with vision and sound. And we care about soil, so we can more efficiently to increase, use less resource to increase the uh, yield. So we have the soil sensors on temperature, humidity, and conductivities. And these are just the beginning. 
We provided the flexibility and openness to our community. So you can use Data Logger to bring in more industrial sensors. As a maker, you can just build your sensors with a microcontroller and groove system. And we like to work with you to explore the future versions of SenseCap, make them industrial, make them uh, survivable in the wild. So that's all for the sensors for this year. The next frontier is about AGAI. There are so many fresh real data out in the field, and a lot of scenarios require edge computing for real-time inferencing. To do that, we, have a, we need to have an easy way to collect tech data with sensors. We need integrated devices ready for production. And we should, the whole process should be easy even for long tech people. In the past few years, we see a lot of efforts trying to bring air into the wild. We see underwater drones use AI to influence the coral reef to know its changes. We see the wildlife, wildfire, the drones are flying by to detect the most urgent area. And also for other uh, emergencies, we use AI a lot where there is real, no real-time communications. We have to make the decisions right in the scene. Not to mention agriculture's oil platforms on the ocean. There are so many things are going on it requires a different deployment of AI. And we have to keep supplying all sorts of edge computing AI accessories, all the way from SOM, the core module, to carrier boards, to HeSync, to enclosures. And also we keep adding in new sensors, different kinds of camera, LiDAR, into this product line. But this is still too difficult for people to make combinations to pick the right selection. They might just want to deploy a simple AI solution, but in, in the end, they have to become the expert of the hardware. So we are working very closely with NVIDIA to deliver the latest edge AI tech in one single piece. So not only developers, but also system integrator who has been working in a vertical domain could use AI easier than ever before. Here goes, uh, here is a short video about Recomputer JSON series to give you a quick feeling. So NVIDIA has already packed so many popular frameworks into containers. And uh, it's like, NGC is like catalog of optimized software for GPU. So this is perfect ground for developers, but for system integrators, we are creating an even simpler web interface. So they can just uh, click and deploy the popular containers and also to update the models, configure the input and output, and also, everything will be ready in an API basis, so you can insert the whole AI subsystem to your existing like cloud or private edge uh, solutions. So we're here to present you the Recomputer JSON series, which will be shipping next month. And uh, we'll be starting from JSON Nano, which is $199, and up to NX module, which is $69. So the whole series will be like AI box. You can just uh, off the shelf and use it. And uh, it has included the JSON modules, built-in software, and it has rich set of I.O. And because of openness, our habits of enable people to innovate, we like to work with you to customize them. 
so it can totally scalable and extensible according to your applications. More than that, we see a lot of more complex AI projects on the edge. They either need a more powerful AI computation power or they need a server client mechanism to improve the overall ROI. For example, for the oil platforms, there are so many points of interest you need to watch over. Like the workers, are they doing it under safety? And uh, is there like an exceptional fire? How was the waves doing in the surroundings? So all of these points of interest, they are not happening simultaneously. We need a server that can be sharing their powers in different space and uh, time domain. So for this kind of scenarios, people prefer to have a central parts platform and to, to upgrade the whole scenarios into AI. And uh, we believe inferencing server is going to play more and more important role. So that's where we like to int introduce more powerful inference serving on the edge. The prerequisite is already out there. Like NVIDIA is releasing more and more powerful computing modules. Like AGX Orin is 200 tops. And all the Triton open source server software is already out there. So we like to wrap them together to make it simple to use. Still click to deploy. You can just update your existing infrastructure with AI. And also to put so many things into a small box that it can carry away, we use some extreme thermal management means like Vampire Chamber, which has been used from laptop and mobile phones now today for your AI server. So I'd like to present you Reserver JSON today. It's going to be your inference center on the edge. Besides the 200 top AI performers, it has all the built-in thermal management. And we give it enough connectivity from 2.5 giga per second, 4G, 5G, and other connectivities you can update with. And we need enough space so you can build in storage for your inferencing on the edge, keep some of flages for the future usage. And uh, the starter will be a JSON 20. It's based on Javier NX, starting $89 next quarter. And by end of this year, we expect to have AGX uh, Orin and AGX Javier modules. So they will be much powerful. We call them JSON 30 and JSON 50. The price will be de defined by that time. We are not delivering these solutions alone. We have been working with amazing ecosystem partners all the way from software to algorithm to data sets and to public cloud. So we also invite them to give you some perceptions today. Hi guys, this is Glenn from Ultralytics. I'm the author of YOLO V5, which is one of the world's most popular vision AIs. And I'm really excited today about our upcoming partnership with Seed Studio in China to allow YOLO V5 to be seamlessly deployed on popular edge devices like Raspberry Pis and Jetson Nanos. I think this is going to open up a whole new world of opportunity for people in the AI space. Hi, I'm Adam Benzian with Edge Impulse. We're the leading development platform for embedded machine learning on edge devices. In collaborating with Seed, we are helping the embedded ecosystem design the next generation of intelligent devices across voice, computer vision, and sensor fusion. We're making ML applications more useful and better than ever, unlocking massive value for every industry in the world. I am personally excited about ReComputer, the new seed kit for the Jetson Nano platform, which will boost innovation for Industry 4.0 apps. Things like anomaly detection, manufacturing production workflows can be improved tremendously with machine learning. We're looking forward to working with businesses everywhere and make embedded ML the next big things for every industry, developer, and device. Join us. Hi, my name is Ari. I'm the VP R&D at Cognitive. In Cognitim, we've been developing for over 15 years autonomy for robots in Israel and worldwide. In the last two years, we developed Nimbus, our cloud-based solution for the development, management, and deployment of autonomous robots. In SEED, we see a valuable partner that can help us to grow a community of robotic developers. In this partnership, we see our role as the company that can help to easily integrate these components into a software stack 
that can be tested, developed and deployed for robots and robotic solutions. We're very happy to participate in this annual event with you as your partner and look forward to do great things together. Hi there, my name is Panos and I am the CEO and co-founder of Xenus. We provide ethical facial analysis solutions. We have been working with the Seed Studio team for a few months now. We are using the A206 board along, along with a few other components. We are very happy with the service and support we are getting from the entire team. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Marty Beard, the CEO of Always AI. We are really excited about our partnership with Seed. You know, the whole area of IoT or edge computing is really taking off and computer vision in particular is becoming a super important application that many, many verticals and enterprises across the world are exploring. This partnership allows us to bring together the software that enterprise developers need to build computer vision applications and actually deploy them out onto edge devices that Seed is so expert at bringing together devices like NVIDIA Jetson products. Together, again, this is a software-hardware combination that we think is critical for the enterprise developer and is gonna help them get going very quickly and very efficiently as they capture the magic of computer vision on the edge. Dusty empowers deep learning developers to build, optimize, and deploy faster and more accurate models on any environment including cloud, edge, and mobile. By leveraging Desi's platform to optimize your models for the Jetson embedded system, you can maximize the utilization of your hardware, hit your inference performance targets, and reach production faster. Desi is glad to partner with Seed to simplify and accelerate deployment of deep learning applications on cloud and edge devices. The final frontier today is about collaborations. CIDA has been surviving today by enabling a lot of innovations with hardware. We have realized more and more that hardware itself is not the full solution for people to really bring impacts. So we like to work more with our ecosystem, with our partners, with you to co-invent more wheels for anyone who wants to transform their industry. We hope more people can embed AI and IoT with much easier success and faster. So for the last uh, decades, we have been working with awesome partners to scale up their projects. So they can maintain relatively smaller team, but they have a project that is built into all over the world. The products including things like oscilloscopes to palm-sized drones, from uh, single board computers to educational kids. There are a lot of things we share the inspirations, we get moved and uh, we are proudly support them for many years. Going forward, we see it's more and more important that we work with uh, the people. See the studio is very good at uh, opening the device for people to really deploy them. And we have the full stack of IoT engineering team to support any challenging IoT projects to build from scratch and modify them on the fly. And we have the engine manufacturing and customization services, which we have been serving thousands of projects already. So for our partners, they are usually experts in their specific domain. They have unique data sets, algorithms, and know-hows, but they lack of hardware capability. What city can do is to help them scale their projects, make them into production ready, Whenever the distribution is going out to our direct customers and we share the profit back, either by royalty or donate to specific organizations. If you haven't started doing that, don't worry. We have a kit totally for beginners. So see the studio low hour and dev kit. We are pricing it for $99. We are going to ship it next month. It's going to be a jump start IoT kit. It's plug and play. It has faster access to Helium and other low hour network. And uh, its core is a wild terminal. It's a controller with display and machine learning capabilities. And we also include the five most popular groove modules 
so you can jumpstart your ideas and also to get more like uh, elements easily for your proof of concept. Whenever you have done the, the first projects, we can start to talk, find out how can we scale your projects into a production level. We like this kid to be a conversation common ground to facilitate the, the demands for future IoT applications. Lastly, back to the original of our conversation today. We have been exploring a lot on the why of the maker movement, the future venue of IoT. So the last thing we'd like to talk about SDG. Back to the beginning of the, the webinar today, we have been exploring a lot about the why of maker movement and IoT. Because I think the technology itself is not creating enough venue but it's going to be the real life problems. SDG is a sustainable development goal initiated by UN. It's actually a very good pool of that problems needs to be resolved that IoT can come into play. So we have been actively involved in SDG efforts and we have been initiating the Take for Good program. So if you have done anything about SDG, please share with us. We will support you with hardware and scaling up options. We have been well inspired by our partners of different NGO of different group of people. And I like to mention Project 15 from Microsoft. It has inspired a lot for the campaign today. It brings us to really think about how can we use IoT to protect wildlife, not only just for a proof of concept, but something which is working, scalable, and more people can just adopt that. So we invite you to join our journey to find better purposes to make an impact with the IoT talents we have today. So that's all for today's product announcement. This is just the beginning. Please welcome you to join our Discord channels. I'm happy to keep sharing more information and to answer any questions you have. And our social channels will be open. We will also update more information on Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, and YouTube. And uh, more of our projects will be created on Hexter. Please feel free to check them out and uh, to refer us your questions. We really hope technology is not the frontier instead of conflicts. We hope you will stay healthy and create something awesome. Farewell.